Coming up next on the Jeff Curley Show, she is dressed as a superhero for Halloween, but Raven Harrison is the conservative warrior and she's out to save the country. Her journey just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Curley, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Well, as you know, this is a family company. I work with my son and my daughter, and we host now something like 120 plus different podcast TV shows. And one of my favorites is the one hosted by uh, the young lady to my right, Raven Harrison. She calls herself the conservative warrior. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> I know we should first explain the outfit. What so, outfit? <laughs> she's like, that's my everyday wear. Oh, of course. I'm sorry. Was there something? Yes. She, she even has. A, <laughs> is this not awesome? I can I do this it. all day. I love it. Well, so I want everybody to, to know your heart and know your journey. So how did this all begin for you? Well, it's, uh, it's, a, it's been a journey in the making. Uh, I would say it started, I am the daughter of two Air Force Lieutenant Colonels, retired. And that's a, a unique upbringing. I was an only child. And I skipped a couple of grades. I was a big reader, so I was in college at 16. And you carve out an ambitious path when you start down there, but I didn't really have all the pieces together until I became a mother and a wife. And then you realize that something was dreadfully wrong in our country. And you know, God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies who he calls. So here I am. And now that's my social media team came up with the term, the conservative warrior. Well, I remember meeting you here. I think you were, you were getting a tour and uh, you just have a presence about you. I'm sure you're told this. <laughs> this is without the outfit. Today? <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> without the shield. Uh, but you, you do have a larger than life persona. And, and where does that come from? Mom, dad, both? Both. I mean, I used to, to joke, they say, your mama wears combat boots. I'm like, you have no idea. Both my parents, I mean, they are just, uh, I was independent, but they are warriors. I was raised a patriot. I was raised a warrior. And I'm Native American by descent. So I tell people I'm not only an America first, I'm a first American. And there's just inherently something in you that has the fight. And I'm grateful for it because now with the need, I'm pretty glad I am who I am. Absolutely. And she wants to take that fight to Washington. I know you ran for Congress yes. against uh, uh, Congressman Burgess. Yes. It's tough to run against a, a conservative um, uh, incumbent, uh, but yes. uh, you did well. We did well considering. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was definitely what people want to know. I hear two things a lot. What was the swamp really like? And um, how do you manage what you see? And I tell them that it's the swamp is deeper and wider than I ever imagined, but it just shows you that there's a need. But it's just become, so many things have just come off the rails with this, but I am definitely the one, and not discouraged, it's when you're taking on something that big, something that powerful, something that, quite frankly, deeply entrenched, it's, it, you don't always get it the first time. Would have been nice if we got it the first time, but we'll oh. throw him a retirement party he deserves <laughs> soon. How long has he been in office now? 20 years. 20 years, yeah. 20 years. Uh, voted with Pelosi um, to lower the voting age to 16 so that Tide Potters can, can vote and said that babies masturbate in the womb. Oh, gosh. And it was just absolutely, I said, oh, yeah, he's got to go. But right now we'll just let them enjoy their victory lap because we have bigger fish to fry in our country right now than just him. So right now we got to get behind the common cause. And I love the campaign that you ran. It was an awesome campaign. You, you created some wonderful videos. Let's go ahead and roll one now. The eyes of the world are on America and the eyes of America are on Texas. We are in a cold war on our own soil. The government does not 
and will never have the constitutional authority to mandate what free Texans inject into their bodies. I am not silent. I'm going to fight. Wars are won by warriors, not career politicians. If you're going to change the message, you have to change the messenger. I believe today that God has found a statesman in a lady by the name of Raven Harrison. I am pro-God, pro-life, pro-Constitution, pro-America, pro-flag, pro-freedom, pro-term limits, pro-law enforcement, pro-military. I am a daughter, I am a wife, I am a mother, I am a friend, I am an executive, I am a warrior and I will fight with a tenacity you have never seen before. It is time to release the raven. I will never be silent. I will hold their feet to the fire. I am the nightmare before midterms. I am Raven Harrison, and I approve this message, even if they don't. Wow. I, I love your messaging. And one of the cool things now is you have your own television show. So you, you get to be the executive producer and you get to decide issues to take on. And it's the best thing, Jeff, in this day and age where conservatives are being so censored. Um, this is our First Amendment constitutional rights, what our, our republic was founded on. And the fact that now I get to have a voice, I get to relate directly to the people what the vision is and what I'm trying to do. And I tell them it's really not about me. It's about what God wants. It's about what my children having the opportunities that I had. And just simple things of being able to go to school without having their faces covered and without uh, being told what they have to put in their body. I mean, they're children. I just... How can I not fight? This is my biblical and my privilege to fight for them and to give them the world that at least better or the same as the way we got it. We've got a couple of still pictures from your, your show, and I want you to talk about uh, what is it like being the host? I know you've been a guest many times. It's, uh, it's unique, but I love it because I can ask the questions I want to know. I don't believe in softball pieces. I don't believe in getting people who have really good knowledge of how to fix what's wrong in our country and asking them things like, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? You know, and things like that. It's like, how do we fix this? What do we do? So I'm very much a verbs in our sentences gal. I don't want to tell you just what the problem is. I want to tell you how to fix it. How are we going to fix it? What do we do? Because that's what people really need to know. They don't want to hear me tell, tell me that the, the strategic oil reserve is running out into, well, what do I do? You know, do we stock up on this and that? So I really want to do that differently. Instead of just having people sign on to watch me talk, what are we going to do? What's the solution? If I don't have it, let's bring in the people who do. Yes. So let's talk about the midterms. Um, yes. Do you, do you have a, a feeling for how it's going to go? I do have a feeling, but I also have a word of caution for people. I am a big fan, but you don't hear me say the red wave. And there's a reason for that, because just with me running, um, we have two things. We have to restore integrity in our government, which has to be done. I said this against, you know, uh, Michael Burgess. If I could get behind you, I wouldn't have run against you. So we want to right now diffuse the communism. But a lot of these what I call milk toast Republicans who've been selling us out, who have not gotten on board, who have not held to our party values. So what I want to do in the short term is get out and vote. I tell people that's the most important thing. That is your right. My parents bled for this. People died for this. People didn't come home so that you can have the right to cast that ballot, whether you think it's a long shot or not. So get out and vote. If you think they're cheating, then take five people with you. So that's what you want to do. Just vote. Take five people. So let's do that on November 8th. Let's get the house back. But I tell them it doesn't do any good to take the house back if you don't clean it first. Mm. So let's take the house back. And then on November 9th, holding the people who are in there who are going to be kind of kicking back and going, oh, wow, we, we've, we're safe for another two years. You are not safe. The conservative warrior is on it. Um, we're going to be demanding accountability, going to be demanding that you do what we elected you to do. So that's where the fight is. Yes, and, and you were very active on the campaign trail. We've got some pictures from your Facebook of you just out meeting people. What do, what do people care about? I mean, do they care about, uh, is it a... Uh, uh, pocketbook issue or what, what are people this telling you? This is very much, Jeff, I believe a kitchen table election right now. They care about inflation. 
skyrocketing. They care about the garbage that's being taught in our schools. They're, subs they're trying to subvert my will as a parent by saying, no, no, don't come to your parents, come to us. Don't, you know, uh, let us teach them these things that are completely against your principles and values, absolutely not. So they care about the fact that it's it's costing hundreds of dollars to fill their tank. They care about the fact that the grocery stores are empty. They care about the fact that we have people literally flooding in our wide open border. Fentanyl going through the roof, and we're going into Halloween today, and this is being mixed in with children's candy. This is what they care about, and the government refuses to secure our border. They refuse to stop teaching this stuff in our schools, and they refuse to do, they're emptying our oil reserves when we're sitting on oil. Right now, they shut down our energy independence, and we're going into winter, coldest time when people need their heat, and we are dependent, and we only have two weeks left. We have until Thanksgiving before the strategic oil reserve runs out. It's a big problem. So this is what Americans care about, the things that are affecting their home, their schools, their children, and their pocketbooks. I love your passion. Where does this come from? This is, <laughs> I don't know if it's Native American or if it's Air Force ridden, but it's, I, I love having that fire now, Jeff, because for the longest time, it's, you know, we don't want to offend people. And I'm a, just a firm believer. I don't want to, I don't want to offend God. <laughs> That's me personally. But now they're not going to silence us. We can't give away our voice. So now I'm happy to be on those front lines. And I'll have a dialogue with anybody. Some people disagree with me, some people agree, but I feel like we're more alike than we are dissimilar. We just may disagree on how to get there. And that's what I, I, I open the dialogue. Let's talk about it. You think that my, my feeling now, things about God and facts, let's argue facts. We don't argue feelings, we argue facts. And uh, that's what we do going so, forward. So uh, politics is just a rough and tumble game. <laughs> I, mean, I have to admit, I'm a pleaser. I like everybody to love me. <laughs> and so that's my curse, is that I want everybody to just you know, throw me a parade. Politics, it doesn't matter how popular you are. You still have a certain segment who doesn't like you. Are, oh, are you OK with goodness. that? Oh, my goodness. And you, you get OK, just because I've had thick skin my whole life. But <laughs> I will tell you, it was definitely an eye opener, because I'm from Texas. I'm a third generation Texan. So I came back to fight for my home. And I came here with this very Pollyanna, I'm here to fight for our country. And I literally got a, an email from a grassroots organization saying, we don't like minorities. Mm. And I went, that's it? That's the whole email? <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. So it's, it's one of those things of going, but am I going to let my kids, you know, future be tossed because I'm afraid that People don't like me. The voters overwhelmingly on the campaign, we had a great time because we listened and my door was wide open. So the voters we had a great time with, they were awesome. They believe in me. Mm -hmm. And that means more to me than anything they could offer me to sell out any money. This is what it's about is they're trusting me to take their vote, their wishes and be the servant that I was born to be. Wow. I love your fight, and I know we haven't heard the end of this. Uh, final minute or so, uh, talk to the voter. Uh, look right in the camera and tell them what, to, what they need to be doing. Well, what we need to be doing is to stay involved. You know, don't let anybody gaslight you. Don't let any politician or anybody tell you what to think and feel. Get involved. Do your homework. Know what you're voting for. Don't just vote for the letter. Vote for the principles and the character of who you want to represent you. It's so imperative now more than any other time. So we've got to get involved, be part of the solution. So things are kind of bleak right now, but we have hope. You know, God has the victory. So just be encouraged, be a good cheer. If you can't be on the front line, support those of us who are on the front line and just enjoy that you were made for a time such as this. Wow, this is a great way to end this segment. We're going to end with your website, which is ravenharrison.com. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Great to be here. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.